Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Thank you, God. ready for the word tonight. I'm excited about the messenger who's bringing the word tonight because the last time she ministered, she blessed my socks off. That yes. I wear today. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So come on, Denise, feed us the word of God. Amen. 
Those of you who were on last night, it was so nice. We had to do it twice. So Amen. here we go. <laughs> Amen. That's so why I, got... I saw that sign behind you. I said, oh, part two. <laughs> and so... Denise, Jesus said, and again, I say. All right. Amen. And I say. That's right. So we just add into it tonight. Um, got a little narrative for you. I'm going to bring something biblical to to present day okay all right all right so here's my narrative so look i got some tea for y'all let me tell you <laughs> you heard you know y'all know bathsheba right y'all know her right well let me tell you about bathsheba you know you know she married and all that and girl why does she have an affair with king david like, whoop, you know, she out here, she married, and he what? lusted after her, and, and all this. And then, guess what? What? They they conceived. Girl, she she's pregnant. Like, what? what? She's pregnant, right? So then, you know what King David did? <laughs> because he was trying some stuff, because he was trying to cover it up, and it didn't work. So he um decided that he would do what he needed to to have Uriah killed. Say what? Yes. And man, she, look, Bathsheba, she was tore up. She was sad. She was mourning. Then he was just so inconsiderate. Then he had the nerve to be like, Bathsheba, hey, you want to come be one of my side chicks? Say what? After she was a wife. But you know what? That's what happened. And I just feel bad for her. But you know, you know, I ain't out here. I'm not doing none of that. You know, she she was married and that was adultery. But you know, I'm not married, but I'm just out here doing my own thing. Mm. So that is gossiping. Right? That is gossip. And then we forget that, you know, hey, I'm I'm sinning too. I'm talking about her because she's married, but I'm not married, but out here doing some other stuff. It's the same thing. Well. Well, so so here we go. We gonna go to James 5, 16, and then I'm gonna do 19, 20. You know, we tend to do that sometimes, you know, talking about people. Oh, guess what so-and-so did? And like I said, God's been working on me, work in progress, trying to just do one of these and pray instead. Amen. So James says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. That's the NIV. And the uh, King James Version says, confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Moving down to 19 and 20. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Mm. So and this is what Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. How quickly we... I'm not just, I'm not talking about us, but I know me, I'm me talking about somebody, judging somebody because what season they're in, not knowing that, not realizing that I was in that same season or I could be in that same season. Mine might be a little different, but it's the same. So point one, stop judging someone else in their valley experience and pray for them. Yes because we're not helping them by talking about them, by telling people what we heard and, and all that. So 
it's better to pray for them. If you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Amen. So my second point is make a spiritual deposit so they're not in the deficit. So that person might be empty. They might not know the Lord or they might be, you know, you know, just struggling for the moment. So it's better that we make a deposit into them, you know, whether it's sending them scriptures, reading scriptures to them, praying for them, praying with them, giving them an encouraging word, saying something positive to them, you know, just letting them know that, you know, it's going to be okay. This is not a permanent season for them. And um, we know that working for the enemy equals death wages. You going to get paid. You going to get paid. Amen. Definitely going to get that payment. And we don't want that payment. We don't want that. We want what God has for us. We don't want death wages. It may, stuff may seem good in the moment, in the time being, in a couple minutes, in a second, but there are consequences. And um, so my next scripture, Matthew 7, 1 to 5. NIV. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? you hypocrite first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye oh. um how can i say it? don't don't be a hypocrite don't be a hypocrite mm -hmm. and as i said before this is not biblical but we all know this one people who live in glass houses shouldn't what Throw stones. Throw stones. So, you know, we people we tend to do that as human beings. We judge people. We talk about people, knowing we could be in the same situation as them. We could sit All there right. and say, "Oh, I, I would, I would never do that. I would never be caught in that type of situation." But we're in this flesh. We don't know what we would do. We, we people tend to compromise. A lot of the times they say, oh, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't do that. But we end up sometimes doing it, especially if we're in our flesh. Amen. That's good. Um, John 8, 3 to 7. NIV. What I'm, where I'm reading from. Excuse me for a minute. Can you? Bye. I love you. Bye bye. Bye. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Yep. I'll talk to you later. Please don't use my makeup. Thank you. <laughs> You'll be messing with my makeup brushes. Bye. No, I Okay. Hi. Hi. Yeah, they can hear you. Bye bye. Bye. So. It reads, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. Um, they made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now that, now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. 
I have I, I have so many questions about that. How how did they know what she was doing? Well, <laughs> how did they know? We are. I think we already kind of figured the answer to that. So, you know, <laughs> they were at fault too, but they were putting all the blame on her, right? They they ain't do nothing. Sure. So, moving down to Luke 6, 37 to 38, NIV. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For the, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Again, Stop gossiping. Note to self. Remember, we have all backslid. And the same way we judge people's actions is the same amount of judgment we'll receive. And another thing to remember, yeah. you weren't always saved. Remember back when back in the good old days, right? Weren't always saved. And it's good for us to show others the same grace that God has shown us. We tend to forget that. We just are so hard on people, you know, like I've done it. Be like, I, why don't so-and-so, why don't they just get it together? I don't know why they keep messing up in this area. They just, I don't know, it's just, it just annoys me. I don't know why it bugs me so much. Could it be maybe I'm messing up in the same area and it's like looking in a mirror? Come or could on, it be Keith. that maybe I need to just shut up and pray for them? Because everybody goes through something. Everybody has some sort of weakness. When we stay in, in our flesh, we have some weakness and we don't have to pray for them. And we act like we can't show them any grace because they keep messing up. What if God was like that with us? Lord. What if we messed up time and time again and there was no grace? Jesus. So Amen. Jesus was the example for us. So to show grace to other people when they're messing up, because we don't know, it could be generational. It could be, you know, um, a familiar spirit. We don't know what is on that person. So we have to make sure that we show them the same amount of grace because if we were in those same shoes, we would want them to be gracious to us and to pray for us and all that. So it's good to, you know, make sure we pray for other people when they're going through some situations and should make us think, you know, hey, yeah, I remember you know what? I did go through that. Let me go minister to them. Come on. Let me go and see if I can evangelize. Let me see what I can do to help them because what you're going through, what you have been through is not for nothing. Yes. You're, it's for somebody else, it's for you to help somebody else. Because if you came out of it, you learned a lesson from it. So then you're able to help somebody else who, who really needs it. And it might be another believer, might be a non-believer, but we're able to help other people because we've gone through it. Because people don't want to hear from somebody they can't relate to. Right. You could say, oh, you know, um, you'd be talking to somebody like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm going through this or whatever. And that person knows nothing about it. Well, I don't, I can't really understand what you're going through, but well, then keep your butts out of it and you shouldn't be giving me advice because you have no idea what I'm going through. I want to hear from somebody that can actually help me, somebody I can relate to. Come on. So um I'm moving along to Romans yeah. six. I have the NIV here. Mm 
what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. Okay. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I'm using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time oh. from the things that you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life right. in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 What did y'all reap? What did we reap? We reap what we sow. I'll go back to that. We reap what we sow. Right? We want to sow life. We want to sow the things of God. We want to sow. This takes fruit of the spirit, definitely. Mm -hmm. Self-control. You know, self-control to stop doing the things that our flesh wants to do. Self-control to Stop talking about people, self-control. There are no levels to sin. I've heard people say, well, I'm not out there doing all that. You know, I'm not doing what he's doing. Brother so-and-so, he doing all this and he got these girlfriends and, and then he got a wife and blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this over here, but there's no levels. It's all the same in God's eyes. That's right. There's no levels to it. People seem to think that, but it's not. 
And so don't contribute to someone else's sin. Don't contribute Mm -hmm. to someone else's sin. Some people, they don't know no better. Right. But what are we doing if we help to contribute to say, just just help them along, help them do whatever it is they're doing that's not right, support them in doing what's not right, Mm -hmm. or go right along with them and do what's not right. Because we know that bad company corrupts good character. That's right. So we don't want to contribute to their sin because that's leading them away from God. It's leading them away from, you know, what they need to be doing. We don't want to be a disappointment to our father when we should be helping someone because people, they don't want to hear the truth. Mm. They don't want to hear it. And like I said, going back to an old word, don't co-sign my sin. Come on. We know who to call when we're doing something we shouldn't do. People know, you know, who to call, like, oh, I'm gonna call so-and-so. Well, I can't talk to this person because, you know, they're going to judge me. They're going to tell me what I don't want to hear. But I'm going to go over here and I'm going to talk to this person because they're going to tell me what I want to hear. And they're going to co-sign for me because they're doing the same thing. And it makes them feel good because we two up in church and we're doing the same thing. So it must be all right. Right? Watch out so, now. It, it must be all right because she doing this and I'm doing this. So it's, it's all good. We're, we're in the same place. Instead of us sharpening each other, instead of us, you know, praying for each other and uplifting each other, we're helping each other go on the path that we don't want to go. Spiraling down. Mm. Busting hell wide open. Jesus. Because we don't want to hear the truth. I, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to talk to my to my leaders because you know i'm doing xyz and they're not going to understand <laughs> y'all we all y'all people y'all you know when i was younger i was i didn't know i didn't know i was like and i'd hear pastors say yeah well i used to be a drug dealer i used to do this and that i was like what but who better than somebody who has been brought out of that lifestyle oh to talk to you know we got young men out here they out here that's their side hustle that's their main hustle whatever they're doing it because they want quick money who better to talk to than mm-hmm. someone who's lived that lifestyle who has gotten out of it amen who better they're not going to want to talk to their parents they're not going to want to talk to you know family members they need to talk to somebody who's been there and somebody can say you know what this is what god has done for me Mm-hmm. He's brought me out of this situation and he can do it for you. But, you know, I'm going to need us to get close, you know, befriend them, you know, talk to them. And so, yeah, I was a little, I was a little ignorant with that because I didn't know. I'd just be hearing stories. I'm like, because I just figured they've been holier than now their whole life. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Oh. You used to do that? Like, we're all human beings. Like, of course. Who better to talk to? So, you know, when we're hanging out in our flesh, we seek counsel and confirmation from other fleshly people. We don't, we don't want to talk to the pastor. We don't want, no, nah, we don't want to do that because we want to hang out and have fun and collect those uh, death wages, right? Uh oh. We want to collect those wages because you know we having too much fun. Our flesh is having fun. Yeah, no. So, you know, and, they, and these are things that people say. I've heard. Well, it's okay this one time. Who's going to know? God knows. Amen. Who's gonna know? And that one time turns into three times. Right. Repent later. Cause, because guess what? Then we put the word on it. God's grace is sufficient. We put the word on it. <laughs> We make the word try to work for us in certain situations. No, we take bits and pieces of what we want to be like, you know, he's going, God's going to forgive me. He, you know, Jesus paid it all. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Right. Come on. Then like, then I, I've heard this. 
I'm not gossiping. I'm not uh, gossiping. But... I was just calling you because I just wanted to let you know what was going on so you know how to pray for them. Oh, 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 that's a good one. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I don't need to know because for real, if you want me to pray for that person, you'll just say, hey, so-and-so is going through a situation. Just right. pray just for them because oh, God yeah. will let you know. The Holy okay. Spirit will let you know what that person needs in that moment that person don't have to call you talking about yeah so and so oh she was oh my gosh she was doing all this and that and oh my her husband oh and da da da, da. no all holy right. spirit will let you know what you need to pray for I'm teaching and here the other one god knows my heart yes, he, does. <laughs> he does he does he knows your heart he knows you he knows your intentions Mm -hmm. good and bad so yes i've heard that plenty you know god people like why do people always say that well god knows my heart yeah mm -hmm. yes he does he will. so i've you know we've heard so many things that are cliche so many people trying to make scripture work for them um when we need to just be praying for other people and you know it's so it's so easy to hang out in the flesh it's it's easy it's harder it takes more discipline to walk yes. this narrow path mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know like you know we've, we've all heard it was so-and-so runs into a burning building or you run into a burning building if so-and-so jumps off of a cliff are you going to do it too so if everybody's jumping over the cliff to go jump into hell you going to mm -hmm. wow. i don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to follow everybody. I don't yes. like to follow people. Don't like to follow people. You following people blindly. That I can say you got the blind leading the blind because they don't see. The enemy has blinded them. They don't know nothing. Okay. They don't know that they're about to jump into a pit. They don't know that they're you know out here doing wrong. They just know that it feels good. They know that they like it. They know that they're used to it, but you just gonna go ahead and follow because you trust that person yeah. or because that person well they have like 1200 500 followers and they have all these views so i'm just going to follow them <laughs> because if they're doing it it must be right or well they say they believe in god and they say that you know they they love the lord so it must be okay if i do it too but do they have a relationship hmm. We don't, we don't know that. We just know what they perceive, what they say. And so, you know, I had to, I had to catch myself today because somebody was talking to me about something and I was just like, mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? That ain't none of my business. I'm going to keep my mouth shut on that one. I'm going to pray for it though. Amen. You're not going to get me caught up and say, Denise said anything. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna just pray for him, but mm -hmm, okay, that I'm like that's sad. Mm -hmm, yeah, well, I'm a, I'm gonna pray for him. I'm don't don't tell me nothing else. And um, so I'm moving along to James four, seventeen. I got the NIV, and I have the Good News translation. NIV reads, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Good news translation says, so then if we do not do the good we know we should do, we are guilty of sin. Hmm. It's one thing to not know and to be ignorant. It's another to know what you're supposed to be doing but you're doing the opposite anyway. Because you want to do what everybody else is doing but because you're just in your flesh. Mm. And then we want to talk about other people, but we in our flesh too. And we want to talk about other folk. Man, she over there. Oh, he wilding out. He, he, every summer, he just wilds out. I don't know, but I'm not doing that. You know, I just got this one person I'm, I'm dealing with, but you still fornicating. It don't even matter. It's all the same. <laughs> It's all the same. Um, 
So we want, I'm also, like I said, talking about don't co-sign for people, right? So we all familiar with the story of, I want to say this right, Ananias and Sapphira. Yes. So Acts 5, 1 to 5, and then I'm going to jump down to 7 to 10. I have the good news translation. All right. And I always wanted to say this. When you get there, say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Amen. So here we go. But there was a man named Ananias who with his wife Sapphira told sold some property that belonged to them. But with his wife's agreement, he kept part of the money for himself and turned the rest over to the apostles. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Okay, continue. Peter said to him, Ananias, why did you let Satan take control of you and make you lie to the Holy Spirit by keeping part of the money you received for the property? Before you sold the property, it belonged to you. And after you sold it, the money was yours. Why then did you decide to do such a thing? You have not lied to people. You have lied to God. As soon as Ananias heard this, he fell down dead. He died. And who and all who heard about it were terrified. About three hours later, jumping down to seven, three hours later, his wife, not knowing what had happened, came in. Peter asked her, tell me, was this the full amount you and your husband received for your property? Hmm. Yes. She answered, the full amount. So Peter said to her, why did you and your husband decide to put the Lord's spirit to the test? The men who buried your husband are at the door right now, and they will carry you out too. Oh. At once, she fell down at his feet and died. Y'all, she died. She was dead. Jesus, Jesus. The young men came in and saw that she was dead. So they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Um, I don't want to co-sign for nobody. <laughs> I don't want to co-sign for nobody. Y'all caught up in a lie and yeah. So... <laughs> It's good to always seek godly counsel and tell people the truth, whether they want to hear it or not. Like, so she just she just co-signed, like, that's that's mine, he's mine, and I'm gonna stick beside him. That was the choice she made. They agreed. And in their agreement, they got their they got their death wages. Mm. Because they lied about some money. Money that doesn't belong to them anyway. Because we know that none of this stuff really belongs to us. Mm. It's all God's. We just, you know, we're very blessed to have even a portion. And my last scripture, Second Corinthians 7 and one, I have the NIV. I'm not sure why I put it, but I'm going to read it. Here it goes. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. So, precious promises. Come on. Um, we want to make sure that we are clean. We want to make sure that our hearts are right. That we do things with the right intention. Um, you know. So we gotta. We have to help people. We have to have this heart for people to help them. So to bring them to God. 
we want to reverence him. Like people like, oh, I'm supposed to fear God. Like, oh, I'm afraid. No, it's respect. It's respect. But it's hard to respect somebody you don't know. So when people, if they don't know God, how they can't show any respect because a lot of people out here have no respect. They don't even have respect for their parents. So, you know, we want to make sure that we have good intentions about things and that, you know, we, we reverence God, like, even though people can't see us or, you know, like we think somebody don't know what we're doing or whatever, God sees everything. And we have the Holy spirit in us every time, you know, going to the club, going to the bar, going to, oh, going to that place over there, go to see, go, you know, yeah, we're taking the Holy spirit with us. That's right. So it's just good to remember that he's always with us. He, like he's promised us things and it's hard for us to get it when we can't be honest. We, we, we cover up what we think we don't want God to see. We cover up, um, going, I'm going somewhere else. Um, we cover it up. How is God supposed to do anything if we're trying to cover up? If we're covering up our wounds, if we're covering up things and we're lying, how can we expect him to bless us? How can we expect him to really heal us and, and, and deliver us from some things if we're trying to cover it up with a band-aid for, you know, we want to be cleansed. So anything that contaminates the body, we, we don't want any parts of that. We want that full healing. We want to be in the spirit. We don't want to be in our flesh. We don't want to co-sign for people. We don't want to be gossiping about people. We want to help people. That's what we're here for. We've gone through things so we can help other people, not so we can tear them down and, and talk about them and, you know, whatever. We want to help that person. That's why some people are like, well, I can't, I don't feel comfortable talking to, you know, whoever, because people think, well, either going to talk about me or they're going to share this information with other people. But even if, like I said, we don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing. Just pray about it. Sometimes we got to death and life is in the power of our tongue. So we got to, we got to make sure that we're careful with what we're saying because we might be manifesting some things. We keep saying so-and-so is, I'm not going to say that because that's probably not correct to say here but so and so she being promiscuous but we keep saying that about that person we keep manifesting that about that person because that's what we see but you know I remember one time mom said about you know sometimes she sees things when it's time for her to pray for a person so she speaks the opposite she speaks life into them and that's where we want to be we want to speak life into people instead of speaking what we see you know, so we got to we got to have that discernment to know, like, OK, let me pray for them. Let me whatever they're going through. I don't need to know all the details. You know, I don't want to tell anybody else what they're going through. I'm going to just pray for them. So we want to pray for people. We want to um, people confide in others and we want to make sure we earn people's trust and not tell people all their business. And then like, oh, well, you know so-and-so pastor so-and-so said that you was you said this about me and i confided in you you know that that was personal but we somebody went and told somebody else so you know we shouldn't judge people for the season that they're in you know um because we were there at one point or we could easily be there because i did that one time i was like oh i don't I could never do what so-and-so is doing. I don't understand why they're struggling in that area. And then guess what? Same thing happened. And I was like, you know what? I apologize because now I understand what you were going through and it's not easy. So now all we can do is pray for each other because I, I get it. I understand. So um, that's it. I'm done. Hope y'all got something out of that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. That was that was so powerful and practical. Like we're the church, we're the light. We got to get it together. 
and do this thing right. And you know the saying, sometimes the only Jesus that people will see is the one that he sees through us. Yeah. And that's what I thought about as you brought forth that word that our light can't be, you know how your light will like flicker on and off? <laughs> like when the light bulb's wearing out or something, our light can't be on and then off again. You know, we can't be dabbling over here and gossip, dabbling in fornication, dabbling in adultery, dabbling in things that aren't we're not supposed to put in our bodies. And then, you know, lifting up our hands and praying in tongues over here. And that last scripture that you read, we have to practice holiness. And we pra once we practice it, it becomes a lifestyle for us. And that becomes who we are, holy by nature, because we're born in a sinful nature and we transfer over into holiness by consciously making an effort to practice it. And the reason why sin is sin is because it's fun and it appeals to us. So what appeals to me might not appeal to you. Right. You know, what appeals to a gossiper is hearing gossip. You know, so they're like, tell me more. She did what? She did who? How? And, you know, people tend to feed on that stuff because it makes them feel most of the time better about themselves. Well, I might, like you were saying, well, I might be bad, but I'm not that bad, you know? So I thank you for that work because we need those reminders. Yes. We need to be reminded that we can live a holy lifestyle. We know what it's like to be the one who's gossiped about, and that does not feel good. We know what it's like to be down and out and have, uh, a mother of the church or someone who's more spiritual reach out and tell us you're going to be okay. I know what you're doing and you know, it's wrong, but I'm going to help you to make this right. And you're going to be okay. Yeah. And that's, we need to be a church that has open arms like that. Instead of judging people in their sin, helping them to come up out of it so that they don't yeah. get their that way. So when the devil comes up and says, yes, your payday, it's like, nah, <laughs> I turned this thing around. So yeah. thank you so much for that word Denise it was powerful as I knew it would be because I see who you are and I see that you're starting to see who you are and your confidence yeah. is shining through so thank you for that hey. um got anything babe no. okay um uh we'll go ahead and and take our offering for tonight don't forget about tomorrow night we're blitzing right on in the movement on Saturday, so please join us, same channel, seven o'clock. Yes. We got Mom Jeanette, and we got the prophetess herself bringing us the word, so I know it's gonna be awesome again. We've, we've been having a great time. Yes. Amen. 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 Right. Linda, anything you wanna share about tomorrow night or, or Saturday? Uh, well, yeah, tomorrow night at seven, invite somebody. Just give, you know, send them the link, copy and paste, you know, say, hey, join us. Our ladies are getting together, you know, on Zoom. And then on Saturday, hey, I still have space. I have 31 counted. I got about 41 chairs and I have room for 50. So, hey, invite somebody. All right. And if you if you are in a position to sponsor someone, hey, let's do that because, you know, that way they don't have to worry about a registration fee. Um, or if they need to be sponsored, let me know. But get some ladies out. Let's do this. I'm so excited. We're going to have a good time on Saturday. And I just can't wait. I'm very excited about what God is doing. Amen. Amen. And, this is our final hoorah in that building. Yeah, this is our final hoorah in that building. So we're going we gonna to go out in style. Okay. Amen. That's right. <laughs> but, um, Yes, and I just wanted to thank um, Deaconess Denise for giving the word. Uh, she gave the word last night. Last night. And we was, and um, you know, we wanted to get someone for today. And I was like, you know what? She got to teach that again. Because it, mm -hmm. it was so good. She had to do it twice. And, and Deaconess Denise, what is behind you again? What the Lord was telling you? Yep, we got we got on your head. So we can see. It. There it is. I like that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being open and willing, you know, and, and even it came out differently, uh, but still was the same word and very anointed. And we thank you so much for being open. Appreciate you. So, yeah. See y'all tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. All yeah. right. Could I, ask, could I ask for prayer, please, um, for um, Roseview? 
uh, where my sister is, they have eight patients and four staff members that have COVID. Lord. So I haven't been able to see her or anything. So uh, she's not one of them, but I just want to pray for the whole the whole nursing home. Uh, so if you could just add that to your prayers, please. Amen. Sure. Uh, um, Apostle Nuswan, do you want to uh, cover that and close this out in prayer as well? Father, we just thank you, Lord, for an awesome word tonight, God. We just thank you, Lord, that you continue to show us and, and use those, oh God, that are learning how easy it is just to just surrender to your word and be led by your spirit. So we just lift up that the home tonight, Lord, yes. as, as those are struggling with, with COVID. We come against that spirit. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for a hedge of protection around those who, who have not caught it and, and we pray that they won't get it. God, Father, we, we just thank you, Lord. We come against that foul spirit that's been trying to be dominant over the, the older uh, people and, and over yes. those, oh God, that, yes. that don't know you. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus for healing for those that, that have contracted the, the COVID. So we just ask, Lord, that your will be done in this. We know that you want us to be healed and be whole. So, yes. Father, thank you for a mighty move of your spirit tonight. And it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Thank you for your word again. Yes. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you. Hallelujah. We love everybody. Wow. Eight o'clock. That's perfect hour power. <laughs> All right. Yes. Hurry yeah. it. We have a powerful week and in store. So we'll see every well, we'll see you ladies tomorrow. I suppose oh. some of the men will be in the background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amen. Love you guys. Love you.